the hundred thousand songs of Milarepa, volume one, part two is being continued. Guiding instructions on the bardo, obeisance to all gurus. The God of gods, Lord of darkness, Marpa the great translator, blessed is he by the transmission gurus. A pearl radiates waves of grace. From the crown he ever wears, blessed is he, the real great Mila. Delivered and matured is he, who has completed his devotion. To him, the laughing Vajra, the gifted Repa Jatsang, I pay sincerest homage. To help the ignorant, I now relate this story of Mila's answer to the fairies, wherein is given the path of the instructions on guidance through the perilous bardo when marpa the translator was imparting the initiation to milarepa the buddha samvara and other deities of the mandala together with the 32 gods of dharma and dakinis and the 16 heavenly ladies of offering all revealed themselves in the upper sky milarepa saw this vision clearly for a moment he was then given the name laughing vajra by his guru and the dakinis urged by marpa milarepa devoted his life to meditation because of his extreme ascetism he had gained the tantric accomplishments and merits by mastering the inner and outer causations through his physical body he had attained the rainbow like body of the mind and so became the great jatsan one who had achieved the ultimate realization of mahamudra now milarepa was residing in a green valley to the east of the wondrous market town of dinmadrin bordering on the mon region west of the lower kumbhu beneath dark clouds above the gate to the passage of the black planet rahu and to the left of a snow mountain perpetually wreathed in clouds lay this pasture land medicine valley where flourished emerald like meadows jasmine flowers and various kinds of herbs gently flowing by were two rivers the auspicious milk and the nectar and power milrepa's hut was in a quiet and blessed spot known as the virtuous palace hermitage of chubar he was then completely absorbed in the universal realm of the absolute essence the realm of departing from all play worlds the illuminating realm of no arising and no extinction it was in the autumn of the year of the wooden horse while the 24th constellation was declining that the inhabitants of dinmadrin were afflicted with the white and black smallpox and with vomiting of blood dizziness fever and many other severe and contagious diseases many livestock and human lives have died in the late afternoon of the 11th day of the second month of that autumn when the declining sun looked like a fireball a young girl whom milrepa recognized as a dakini came to see him beautiful charming and radiant she was dressed in a white silk robe of magnificent design edged with jewel like lace and having an apron of exquisite silk with gorgeous tassels she bowed down at milrepa's feet circled him seven times and made nine more prostrations she then said o oh, jatsang our people are very very sick please be kind enough to come with me to the other side of this snow mountain to help us milrepa replied it is better that we go tomorrow you may stay here tonight the girl said if we go by the road of the miraculous light through mantra sari there will be no hardship oh please please come you must come today this old man has never seen such a road before replied milarepa nor do i know where it is but because of your earnest request i shall go with you it is better if you go ahead and show me the way the girl then produced a wooden blanket and lifting it up towards the sky said to the jatsang let us ride on this blanket it will carry us there at once as soon as milarepa stood upon the blanket it rose to the air and quick as lightning they reached their destination on the other side of queen of the azuri heights snow mountain
On the left slope stood a white silk tent with a golden covering. The ropes and pegs were inlaid with precious stones of magnificent quality. In this tent lay another beautiful girl wrapped in many bed coverings and with a long tassel which almost reached the ground in her hair. Her eyes were flame colored as if she had a fever. As the Judson entered, she made an effort to lift her head up a little, crying, I am very sick, please help me. Milarepa asked, How did you catch this disease? How long have you been ill? What are your symptoms? The girl answered, Last summer some shepherds came and lit a big fire near here. I was caught in the flaming smoke which made me very sick at the time. Since last autumn I have not been feeling at all well and today I feel extremely ill. Therefore I had to send for you. The vapors from our mouths have caused many people in this area to contract many diseases. Milarepa thought, that is why so many people here have caught the pestilence. I cannot consent to cure her right away. First I must admonish her. Then he said, Fair lady, not long ago you came to me and took the bodhi Bodhisattva's vow and also reached the teachings of the Patreon Buddha. I preached to you at length on the virtues and karma, but instead of following my instructions, you have violated them all. You have never given the slightest consideration to your moral obligations and the precepts. You, should, you could not even endure such a slight discomfort as that caused by the shepherds and in revenge you have spread the worst kind of pestilence amongst innocent people causing them great suffering and misfortune. Since you have violated the precepts, you will you well deserve such punishment. In view of what you have done, I can no longer trust you. If you will immediately heal all the people in this area, I shall then see whether or not I can help you. If you do not promise to do so, I shall leave at once. Since you, the she ghost, have broken your own oaths and violated the precepts, you will surely be damned. Hearing this warning from the Jetsang, the Dakini was very frightened and immediately clutched Milrepa's feet and said, We are blind and wicked beings. Because of our ignorance, we have spread illness in this region. But please do not talk to us like this. As a rule, if the pure devas and spirits from the higher ranks do not afflict us, we will never attack them first, especially in consideration of your former admonishment. I have not harmed any people or sent others to afflict them. In the last month of this summer, the river here overflowed and all the narrow and precipitous places were flooded. Taking advantage of this, some of our retainers, associates and kingsmen together with many flesh-eating and blood-drinking servants of ours went about afflicting people. I will stop all the contagious diseases as soon as I get better. Therefore, please look after me and have pity on me. Thus, she earnestly besought the Jetsang. Milarepa then performed for her the hundred words cleansing ritual and prayed for her to the gurus and the precious ones many times. He also increased her longevity by performing the ritual of the victorious mother of the crown. The next morning she was able to get up from her bed and make obeisance to him. During the next seven days, the Jetson continuously blessed her with the power of illuminating awareness and the girl was then completely cured. She became even more healthy and vigorous than before. After this, Milarepa said to her, Fair lady, as you have completely recovered, now is the time for you to go to the villages and help the people. Tell me what offerings you would like them to make to you. What rituals should be performed to cure the sick? She replied, according to the reciprocal relation principle of the law of causation, when we recover from a disease, so will the people. It is the common oath of all worldly dakinis that if one of us have been made unwell or unhappy, we are all offended and the devas and spirits support us, throwing the world into confusion. Therefore, if one wants to convalesce quickly, he should recite the quintessential mantra of a Buddha Sudar many times, Read the profound Mahayana Sutras, perform the ritual of cleaning with vase water, mark a circle round the village and confine people in it. Offer white and red oblations and huge dormas. Deck the altars, dedicate the merits to all and then make his wish. He who does all these things will soon be cured. 
Vilarepa then went to Drin and said to the villagers, I have had indications from a dream that the pestilence now prevailing in this area was caused by the local goddesses who are angry with you because you offended and injured them by the fires you kindled. In revenge, they have spread the diseases. You should now perform suitable rituals and make various offerings. Thereupon, the villagers all prayed to the gurus, the buddhas and the guards of dharma, offering them many oblations and huge dharmas and dedicating these merits to the devas and spirits. Through the ineffable power of these prayers and blessings, the pestilence completely disappeared within a short time. On the 29th of that month, the five auspicious ladies of long life, together with many of their followers and local deities, came to visit the Jetson. They brought delicious food and excellent wine in jeweled beakers and offered them to Milrepa. After they had made obeisances to him and circled him many times, they stood in a row and said, It is you, the Jetson, who have saved our lives and cured our illness. You have been most gracious to us. Whereupon with sweet voices they sang, He who can foretell the fall of rain knows how to observe the sun. When one sees the dark clouds gather and the dragon thunders, he knows that the dragon king will soon give rain. To nourish all sentient beings, when slowly the rain drizzles, it shows that moisture and heat are in balance on the earth. When the deafening thunder pearls, it indicates the clashing conflicts between heat and cold. Under the flying clouds stands a great snow mountain with three peaks. The central one is highest. A crown of crystal is her head ornament. Starlit, soft and glimmering surrounds her in the serene night. The rays of sun and moon gleam upon her, beauteous and resplendent was she fashioned. There our noble castle stands. By the left slope of the snow mountain are the wondrous pastures of Medicine Valley. A canopy of rainbows ever hangs about it, reflecting beams of glowing light. Lovely are the herbs grown in the valley. Her dance and play, the local gods, here lies the land of crops and fruit, a garden full of lovely flowers. Your hut stands by the river bank, a place of great blessing, where the yogi, where the great yogi Mila dwells. Through the merits of your previous lives, you receive a precious human body by sloth unhindered. You meditate without diversion. Thus, you have realized mind nature, the unborn, and mastered the magic gestures. No obstacles and distractions can frighten you. Unshakable as a mountain, you are a yogi of stability, having mastered prana to perfection. You have no need of clothing, exposing your body freely by your grace and your devotions. Many beings have been saved. At a time of defilement and distress, you came to the red-faced country of Tibet. You are the glory of the world, our shelter and our pride. The leader of the four Dakinis continued to sing. On the 11th of this month, I was hurt and sulled by smoke and fire. With great pain was my body racked. The unbearable torment tore at me. So I became more, most angry and malignant. Then I asked your help and graciously you blessed me. Performing the ritual of cleansing, also you enlightened me of the mind essence which is beyond both life and death. Of a sudden I came to realize the truth like clouds that vanish in the sky. All my heart was cleared away. My mind became fresh and alert. My body light as wool. So comfortable and well. The fevers left. Health was restored. And my failing breath regained its strength. Thus the peril of death was overcome. Failing to complete their missions, the agents of her death went back with shame. A great debt of gratitude I owe you, O great yogi. Though my, though my birth is low and great, my ignorance, my compassion small and inferior my mind, how can I forget he who saved my life till the end of time? I shall never forget this boon. 
showing my deepest thanks i now offer you my magic powers with loyalty confirmed i shall obey your teaching from now until i win perfect buddhahood i will consort with you by the power of this sincere wish may i never leave you even for a second as a shadow may i follow in your steps leave the first five disciples of gautama like the first five disciples of gautama buddha may we be the first disciples of your pure land when you reach perfect buddhahood may we be may we be the first to drink your nectar and become the children of dharma may we gather the clouds of the four actions and rain down heavenly waters to nourish ignorant beings thus in making their pure wish the auspicious fair lady of long life led her four dakini sisters in singing this song the jatsang thought now these malicious goddesses have shown their gratitude to me for healing their sickness if i give them the preliminary instructions of the arising and perfecting yoga they may be able to practice them then he said fair ladies with great sincerity you have now shown me your deep gratitude for the recovery of your health your words and attitude seem to have met the requirements for tantric teaching i intend to give you an instruction through which you may forever free yourself from suffering on the perilous path of samsara but will you be able to practice it to be continued